Section 5 of, Ma of Complexity Explorer's Mesa Tutorial, Agentize the Landscape, Part 1. In this one, we'll start to turn the sugar data we have from our sugar map uh, into agents that we can use for our agent-based model. Let's get started. Okay, so the first thing I do is, if you remember from Session 4, right, so we're going to uh, uh, make sure that our sugar map.txt file is uploaded so that we can use it. Right, um, and at this time for the pip install Mesa, we're going to add the quiet argument, all right? So that way it doesn't produce as much uh, as much output. All right, so it starts to install everything. You can see there, right? And then we're going to import uh, the same library as we had last time, right? We're going to you know run uh, our sugar class, which is inherits Mesa dot agent, our spice class, uh, which inherits uh, Mesa dot agent, right? Our trader class, also an agent. Right, uh, and then our sugarscape unt, which actually uh, inherits model. We have set up our height and width. We establish a multi grid, right, um, and then we uh, read in our sugar distribution. We flip that sugar distribution to make our spice distribution, and then when we call our model, right, we get this image um, of our sugar uh, of our sugar hills. Right, so now what we want to do uh, is start to turn our uh, give some attributes to our sugar agent. Okay, so in a typical Mesa model, you'll always have at least two uh, parameters for your agent. So one's un unique ID, right? So every agent has a unique ID, right? And then the model. In this case, we're also going to have position, right? Uh, and then the attribute of the max sugar, which is the maximum amount of sugar uh, that e each uh, uh, that each sugar agent can have, right? Based off the read in from the file. Okay, so now we now we're gonna inherit um, the unique ID and model, all right, uh, from our Mesa agent class. So we can use Python super uh, dot init, right? We'll do unique ID, all right, um, and we'll do the model. Okay, now if you ever want to see what these mean or the source code that it's using, you can always go to Mesa's um, uh, the Mesa GitHub repository. You can also click View Source if you're in Colab. Now I'll show you the code we're using. In this case, we'll go to the GitHub Mesa library, right? Uh, as you can see here, we're in uh, the Mesa GitHub repo in Mesa folder, and then the agent.py. So when we call that class, as you, we can, we're actually calling class agent, right? As you can see here, it has unique ID and model. It also has position, but we're just gonna uh, pass that in as its own attribute instead of inherit. So then we're gonna do, uh, using standard Python syntax, we're gonna do uh, self.pos for position, and that's gonna equal pos, or the agent's position, right? Um, and then we're gonna use max sugar for two attributes. First, the current amount of, to instantiate the current amount of sugar, Right, so this is the one we can uh, reduce if an agent eats it all, all right, um, or takes it all. And then uh, the amount of max sugar it has, so that way we can keep track of how what's the most sugar that this particular cell can have in the multigrid. Okay, so this right here then instantiates uh, sugar agents right, with those four parameters, so ID, the model, the position that they're at, and then the amount of sugar they have at any given time, and the most amount of sugar that they can have. Okay, so now we go back down to our model, right? And what we want to do is um, use a for loop, right, to now assign uh, each, um, uh, use a for loop to create uh, each agent or instantiate each agent. Okay, so now to do this, we're going to use one of Mace's, uh, well, first we have to set up our agent ID, right? So this is just uh, uh, so we could make that unique ID, which would just use account. And then we're going to use this for loop, right, um, uh, which requires first a parameter I'll show you in a second that we don't use, then its position in a tuple, x, y, and we use Mace's uh, function chord iter, which just is a function to iterate over every uh, grid cell uh, in Mace's space function. All right, so you can see uh, what exactly chord iter does, right? Um, we can use a print function. So that way you can see what attributes are part of uh, the self.coordinator. Okay. All right, so we do print, okay, underscore, and then the tuple xy. And we run this, 
And now we're actually going to uh, get an error. Why, do you ask? Right? Uh, because we didn't, uh, it's not self.coordinator, .order, it's self.grid. Right? So it's very important to, when you think about what you're referring to in Mesa, that you know what, um, um, what sub uh, module it is. Right? And so this is part of the self.grid, which was from Mesa space that multi-grid. Right, so we're calling a class from Mesa Space, right? You can see here every grid will have a list of things that are in that grid uh, and its position. All right, and just like the Mesa.agent, if you ever want to see what that code is uh, that's creating the multi grid, right, then you can either uh, view source through that, or in this case, if we go to Mesa, then Mesa.space, right, we could see that that's where the chord iter function is. Okay, so it's Mesa.space. Right, um, and then chord iter, which is a sub function of the multi grid class, right? Um, so it's at line 195. And if we scrolled up, we'd be able to see class multi grid. All right, so that's why I call mesa.space, right? It's in the mesa folder, in the space uh, folder, and then dot multi grid. Right? Okay, so now we're going to take this for loop and we're going to uh, instantiate our agents. Uh, so first, we got to get um, the sugar from the sugar distribution. All right, uh, and because the sugar distribution has the same uh, width and height as our grid, we'll just be able the that x and y uh, will be able to reuse um, uh, to iterate through our sugar distribution. Right, and now we know that some areas have no sugar, so what we want to do is only uh, instantiate an agent uh, if that grid cell actually has some sugar on it, right? Uh, and so then we do sugar equals, and then we're going to call our sugar agent. That's what the big S is for, right? Um, and then we're going to put those parameters that we just created. So agent underscore ID. Then we're going to pass in self because this is our model class. So that self gets translated to model uh, when it goes into the uh, agent class. Okay, next we got to pass in the position, which in this case is a tuple. All right, for uh, x, y, right, um, and then the final bit is what their max sugar is, all right, which is then used twice, both to create its initial sugar amount, uh, uh, as well as to create, um, uh, as well as to I uh, store how much sugar they can, uh, the most sugar that cell could have at any given time. All right, so now we've now created a sugar um, object class or a sugar agent that we've instantiated in an object class. All right. Um, that we now need to place on the grid. So once again, we go to self.grid. So now we're referencing our mesa.space.multigrid, right? And we're going to place an agent, right, uh, at that location. Right? And so we're going to use now this sugar uh, object agent that we've created, and we're going to position it in the tuple uh, at x, y. We then are going to iterate our agent ID by adding one to it. And so that way, every time we go through this loop, Right, each sugar agent won't get its own uh, unique ID. Okay. So once again, we go, uh, we iterate through um, the every grid cell, identify um, the uh, uh, the position that we're at, identify how much sugar should be there, instantiate the amount of sugar and the position uh, into a uh, grid cell. Right, uh, and then place that agent on the grid. And just so you can see what this looks like, or, um, we're going to add a print statement. Uh, so that way, uh, once we're done, uh, we can see, uh, we can, you can identify um, everything that we've done. All right, so we got unique ID, model, uh, position, max sugar. Right, and now I want to see uh, how this impacts uh, what happens when we iterate over the grid. So we use the same for loop here, for underscore x, y, and self dot grid dot chord iter. Right. And then we're going to print it. So it's going to iterate through and create all those agents. Then we're going to iterate through it again, uh, just so you can see the impact that it has on the model. Right. Okay. So now as you go through, you can see if there's a cell with sugar in it, right? You can see some have don't, right? Now you can see a sugar agent object at a specific hexadecimal memory location. All right, so that's saying, hey, at this, uh, that's where you see the capital S for sugar, 
and right and is located at this specific memory location. All right. So now that there's something in that uh, in that grid cell, right, uh, you get that uh, agent object. And so then this wraps up the first session of uh, session five, or the first part of Agentize the Landscape session five, right? And the next time what we're going to do uh, is we're going to um, add in the spice uh, and, and finish uh, creating our sugar and spice landscape. All right, so thank you for joining us and we hope you enjoyed session five. If you have any questions or comments, uh, please don't hesitate to use the forum that's associated with Complexities Explorer. I look forward